Hi, everybody. Um, welcome back to part two of our uh, Zombabies uh, Greenfoot game tutorial. Uh, in part one, we I, I showed you where to get graphics for your games and how to deal with them. Um, and we also uh, did the coding for the hero. So what we're going to do now is we will do the coding for the bullet and then we'll do the coding for the Zombaby. And then that should be that should um, be everything for this particular game. Okay, so here we are in the bullet. I need to declare um, some fields. So I'm going to save um, uh, private. Uh, we did this in the in the first in the first part. I showed you what uh, static variables were. Um, so this will be a public static. Um, I also showed you what final did. Okay, and this is going to be an integer. And this is going to be a speed, and we're going to set it equal to 5. So that declared a private variable for us. Uh, static uh, means that this particular variable is shared by all bullets. Okay, So every bullet, every individual bullet is a separate object, and they will all use this same um, constant speed and value of 5. We've set it as final, okay, so it's a constant, it's not a variable, and it's an integer. Okay, so we, we know that this is immutable, it cannot be changed. Okay, so we have declared that. So now, as we always do, let's build ourselves a constructor for the bullet. And in the constructor will be a public bullet. Okay, so inside this constructor, um, I am going to, I am going to pass into this constructor, okay, um, a heading. I want to tell this bullet um, what its heading must be. That's because this bullet must travel in the direction that the hero is facing. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to feed into this constructor. So each time we make a bullet. We will set that bullet's heading. We will pass that information in, okay, in um, on the parameters. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, set the rotation for this for this bullet. So I set its direction. Okay, so there I go. I take this heading that was passed in, and I set my bullet to be facing that direction. The next thing I need to do is you'll notice that I've got uh, no image for this bullet. So I have to make an image for it quickly. So I'm just going to make an image for it quickly. So I'm going to say a green foot image, and we're just going to call it IMG. Uh, it's going to be a new green foot image. Okay. And I'm going to make that image uh, 10 by 10. Okay. So it's 10 pixels by 10 pixels. That's how big I've, so I've set aside a think a square of memory for that image, and there's nothing in it. It's blank at this stage. So then I'm going to say image uh, set color, and I'm going to set color. If you look it up in the API, you'll see that it wants um, a color object. So I'm going to say color, and I'm just going to use the predefined constant black. Okay, there's a, a whole set of predefined constants. Uh, and the word black is one of them. So I've set the pen color. Uh, then I'm going to say IMG. I'm going to use the full oval. So I'm going to use the full oval method of the uh, Greenfoot image class to fill in my circle. Okay, so that's that wants to know um, the extents for drawing it, right? So you can just go and look that up in the API, how the full oval works. And then I'm going to take the black dot that I've now made and I'm going to set that as my image. As soon as this constructor finishes running, IMG will cease to exist. Okay, ask your teacher about scoping um, and, and he or she will explain to you what scoping is. But essentially we created the variable locally inside this, um, inside this method, inside the constructor and as soon as the constructor finishes running, any local variables that we declared or that we built inside that method cease to exist. And that does not matter because we have set that image. We have, we have, we have 
we have saved it and we have set it to our image. So if it then dies after that, it does not matter. Okay, so there we have got our bullet. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we need to be able to, uh, to move this bullet. So we are going to say, how do we move it? Well, we're just going to say uh, move. Okay, I must use capital letters because I defined it as capital letters. It's a constant, okay? So as soon as I create my bullet, it will automatically start moving. The act method is saying move, okay? So as I create my bullet, it will start moving and it'll move in this direction that the, the that I fed in. So now we've got an issue, okay? And I, I, I'll, I'm just I'm mentioning this because I, I know it's gonna happen. Um, we, we have a problem in that we're going to end up with thousands of bullets just all sitting on the edge of the screen. Okay, so we need to be able to remove bullets when they, are, when they have done their job. So I'm going to make a remove bullet method here. So removes bullets when required. That's going to be a private method. So it'll be private. It'll be void. It does not return anything. Uh, remove bullet. Okay. So, well, when do we want to remove a bullet? Well, we're going to say if, okay, is at edge. Okay. So is at edge is, a, uh, is an actor method that will return true um, if this actor is at the edge of the screen. So I can say if is at edge, okay, so if the bullet is at the edge of the screen, I then want to remove it. So I'm going to say get world, okay, so I've, I create a world object, and then I'm going to use the uh, remove object method of a world, okay, so a world class has a remove object method and what object do I want to remove well I want to remove this one okay the one that I'm that I currently am okay so I use the keyword this inside there and that there I must obviously I must call this so I will continuously call this this uh, method that I've made inside of the act method so I'm going to move the bullet and then I'm going to check has it got to the edge of the screen? And if it has, I must I must remove it. Okay. So <clears throat> there is obviously another case when I must remove a bullet, and that is if I've shot a zombie. Okay, so if the bullet has hit a zombie, I will I must remove it then as well. But we will come back to this uh, when we have put the zombies on the screen. So at this point in time, all I want to do is remove bullets when they get to the edge of the screen. Okay, so let's go to, let's just compile and make sure we're good. We are good. So let's just go to my world now and let us um, give ourselves the ability for, for shooting some bullets. So I know, okay, we know by now because we've, uh, if we've done some of the other games, we know how incredibly fast our game is. So if I don't slow these bullets down, or let's say slow down the firing rate, I'm just going to end up with a hail of bullets. I'm going to get 60 bullets a second. Um, and that's just, we, we don't want that. Okay, so we are going to slow this down. Uh, and the same sort of technique we used for animation, we're going to use for slowing down the bullets. We've, we've done this before. If you did the Killer Crayfish game before, you'll have seen it. Um, <clears throat> in fact, we've used this in every, in every um, game we've done so far. We've used this technique. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to create myself some uh, some fields here I'm gonna make a bullet timer okay so I'm gonna make myself a bullet timer I'm gonna set that equal to 20 so that's the number of ticks so I as soon as I shoot a bullet I start a timer counting and I can't shoot another bullet until it gets to at least 20 so I cannot fire bullets faster than every 20 ticks so that means the best I can do would be um, at 60 frames a second would be uh, three bullets a second instead of 60. So that really, really slows it down quite a lot. And then I need another uh, integer here, which will be the, the tick counter. And I initialize that to be zero. 
Okay, so here we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a, a, a new method here called shoot. Okay, and that will be uh, shoot bullets. And I'm, I'm going to do this here. I'm going to do this here in the in the my world. It's not it's not a problem. Um, so here we go. So it'll be a private. Uh, it doesn't return anything. Private is void. And it is shoot. Okay. So the first thing we need to check is: uh, Are we? Can we shoot right now? So in other words, we're going to say if the tick counter, okay, so if the tick counter is uh, greater than or equal to the bullet timer, okay, so it, it's not, it, we're going to make it so it won't shoot if the timer is still counting, okay, it's only if the tick counter has got above the bullet timer, okay, so we can, so we're now in a position to shoot, so here we go, uh, if green foot dot is key is key down okay we're going to use the is key down method in the greenfoot utility class and we are going to use the spacebar key okay that's what we are going to use to shoot with so if the spacebar key has been pressed okay and the bullet timer is 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 good for us now we're going to add an object so we're going to say add object Okay, so what object are we going to add? Well, we are going to add a new bullet. Okay. Now, remember, we just did bullet, and we I'm back on the bullet now. And remember, I've got to pass into it a heading. So when I create a bullet, I must send it. Um, what direction is the hero facing? So in part one, okay, in part one of the of this tutorial. We, you will, you remember, I wrote some, I wrote some getters there, and one of them was get hero rotation. Okay, so Bob, he is the, uh, he is my hero. There he is. There, I created him, and he's an object. Okay, and get hero rotation is a public method that I wrote that will return me Bob's heading. What direction is he facing in? Okay. So there's my bullet is created. The next piece of information that add object wants is where must I put it? Well, I want to put it at Bob's location. So I want to get his X. Okay, and remember that was another getter that I wrote for the uh, the hero object, uh, and then I want to get his Y position. So that is the X and the Y. Okay. Yes, I understand that it's going to look like the bullet comes out the middle of Bob, uh, and you can change yours. Uh, to make it look like it comes from the gun, but it is going to come from his position. Okay, it's not perfect, uh, but it is. But it is functional. Okay, so we have added the bullet object in. So we have now got a bullet on the screen. The next thing we want to do is we want to uh, reset our tick counter back to zero. Okay, so that restarts the timer, and then I also want to uh, uh, I want to play my sound. Okay, remember I've got that bullet sound. So each time I fire, I want to play sound. And what sound do I want to play? Well, I want to play my uh, bullet dot wav sound. Okay, so that will add my bulletin. That will uh, reset my tick counter. That's that's my my delay timer uh, back to zero, and it'll play the wav sound. Okay, then outside of both if statements, okay, I want to increment my tick counter. So that will so each time the at method runs this, tick counter will count up, and this will only shoot a bullet if the counter is more than bullet timer. Let's compile that. Right, it's looking good. Okay, now in order to shoot, okay, I must make myself an at method here in the world, 
Okay, you don't often you don't get that. Okay, often uh, we in, in the stuff that we write, we often won't have an act method in the world, um, but we, we need one now. Okay, because I want the world to be able to do something. So it's public act, public void act, and I say shoot compile. Okay, so let's come back to our guy. Let's run our game. And he is not shooting. Let's have a look and see why. And we have a typo here in the at. Okay, so let's just compile that again. Now let's run him again. There we go. Okay, you can't hear the shooting, but I can hear the shooting here. When you have got your game going, um, you will hear your shooting as well. Okay, so that is the bullet um, and the shooting done. So let's now go and let us go and do the Zombabies. Okay, so Zombabies, here we go. So uh, just to type, uh, just to save a lot of typing here, I've got a bunch of the code that I've already done. So I'm just gonna uh, copy that. I'm just going to paste it in here. Okay, so here I'm declaring my uh, static fields. Now, just like we did for the um, for the hero. Okay, so you'll see I'm back at the hero. Um, we defined here was our here were all the images in an array for our hero. We are doing the same thing, okay? Here for our zombabies, okay? We have got eight frames, and we have got four of them, okay? So we have a, an animation for when it moves left, an animation for it moving right, an animation for it moving uh, forward, and an animation for it moving backwards, okay? So we have got these um, and we've got four different arrays okay so it's private static final greenfoot image type it's an array and then we've got left img right img forward img back img okay it is all caps because it's a constant okay that's the convention for java and i have i am filling my array here okay so i'm putting my eight elements and they are eight greenfoot image elements. I am filling my four separate arrays with those. Perfect. Okay, so I need some more. I need another. Uh, I need a private static final int. And this will be um, <clears throat> change heading threshold. And you'll see as you are using these what they do. And then I need a private static final int. And I need a frame rate. Okay, so this is for this is for the animation for my for my zombie babies. <laughs> okay, so we've got the frame rate and the change heading threshold. This here is this change heading threshold is going to be used for uh, randomizing the direction that they move in because we're going to make these zombabies randomly change direction. Okay, now I'm going to declare some instance variables. Remember, instance variables, these are variables now that belong to each object. Okay, these static variables belong to the class, so every object shares one copy of these. The instance variables each object has its own copy of the instance variables. Okay, so we're going to say private int speed, and we're going to say uh, private int uh, tick counter equals zero. We're going to say uh, private int frame counter equals zero, and we're going to save. Um, private int uh, 
direction equals zero. And here on direction, um, we, we, we are going to say that uh, zero equals right, uh, one equals uh, down, two equals left, uh, and three is going to be equal to uh, up. So I'm using those numbers for these different directions. Okay, so there we have set those up. So the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, create myself, as we always do, a constructor. So here comes my constructor. Uh, it's public. It's called uh, Zombaby. It must match the class name exactly. Okay, so inside my constructor, I'm going to give the Zombaby an initial speed, okay, because in your game, you might you might vary it and make different Zombabies move at different speeds, okay, just to make your game a bit harder. Okay, so I, but I'm, we're just going to start each Zombaby on a speed of four. Uh, the next thing I must do is I must pick a random direction for each Zombaby. So I'm going to say uh, Greenfoot get random number. Greenfoot dot random number. So greenfoot dot get random number. Uh, and I'm going to pick a number from zero to three to uh, from zero to three. So I put four in there. Remember four, and when you say get random number, four is not included. So it'll be zero, one, two, and three will be randomly thrown as the direction. Right, now for the first time, you are going to uh, see me use this, this switch statement. Okay, so I'm going to say switch. And I'm going to switch based on the value of direction. Okay. So switch. Now switch allows us to pick uh, different cases. Okay, so we're going to say, right, if direction is zero okay so that's the first case so if if direction equals zero what must happen well we want to set the image okay we want to set the image for our zombie to be from the right array okay and it'll be image zero so it'll be from the right array this one here right zero png it'll be that image there Okay, so that's just going to be the initial value for our zombie baby. Okay, then we say break. Sorry, it's not right array, it's right IMG. Right IMG. Okay, then we've got case. Well, what happens if this value direction, remember, it can be one of four things. It's going to be 0, 1, 2, or 3. Okay, so if it's case 0, we want to pick right because we said that 0 is right. Now we know that 1 is the down is the down direction. So we're going to say set image. And this time we are going to pick from the, uh, from the down one. Okay, so we're going to pick forward. Okay, so forward IMG. That's the down direction. So it'll be forward IMG, and we want the value from zero. And then we're going to say break. Then we have another case. Okay, what happens if it's two? If if the, if the value of direction is two, the random number that was thrown. If it was a two, well, we're going to say set image. In this case, it's going to be. A left IMG. We're going to bring it from that array, and it's going to be array element number zero from that array. Okay, because we know that two from up here was the left direction, and then we say break. And what if it's not zero, one, or two? Well, the last thing we write there is default. Okay, so if it's not zero, one, or two, okay, we know that the only other option was three. The, the keyword default is, is a catch-all, okay? So if it's not 0, 1, or 2, then default will run, in which case we are going to say set it, the image to um, back IMG. 
zero. Okay, and you'll see now that we, we do not put a break here. So, so this is how this works. Okay, switch will check the value of this. Again, I could have put some sort of uh, statement in there. So I know that direct, I could have put green for get random number in there. Okay, so but I've, I've thrown the random number here. I've saved it in direction. Uh, I then switch based on the value of that. If it's equal to zero, I run that and then I break. Break means jump out of the switch. Okay, so that, that ends the running of the switch statement. You don't have to have the break here, right? Switch, if, if, if it was possible that more than one of these was true, right? If this was, if this was set up that more than one of these cases was going to be true for us, by design, I could leave the break out. But I know that I only want one of these. It's either going to be zero or one or two or three. Okay, but so the default will catch that. And I'm going to break if it's either, any of those. Okay, so that there should make me a, um, a zombie. So let's go back to my world and let's go and make some zombies. Let's just see if they actually come into the world. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do up top here is I'm just going to define, um, I'm just going to say a private int and I'm just going to say uh, zombies. Uh, so it'll be zombies and I'm going to say equals uh, 10. That's how many zombies I want to be created for me. Okay, so when I when my world starts up, I want 10 zombies. So here inside of my uh, prepare method, uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say uh, <clears throat> insert the zombies. So I'm going to put the zombies into the world. And we've done this before. I'm going to use a for loop to do that. So I'm going to say for uh, int, and I'm just going to make any variable here, um, x equals zero. Um, and it'll keep running for as long as x is less than zombies. That's what I defined up here. Okay, so as long as it's less than whatever number I put there, it's my variable. Uh, and then I'm going to say x plus plus to increment it. Okay, so this loop will loop zombies times. Okay, in our case it's going to be 10, but you, you could make it anything you want. Uh, and I'm going to run the add object method here. So what I'm going to add? Well, I'm going to add a new zombie. Okay, so I'm going to put in a new uh, zombie. Okay, there it comes from there. That's what it is. It's a new zombie. Uh, and where do I want to put it? Well, I want it to go at a random place on the screen. So here we go. Greenfoot dot get random number. And I'm just going to say get width. So I'm going to read the width of the screen. Okay, so it's going to give me a random number um, from the possibilities of width. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. A greenfoot dot get random number. You've seen us do this before. And this time we're going to say a, a get height. We're going to use the get height method in the uh, world class. So that's going to put the zombie at a uh, at a random place. So if I hit compile and I come to my game, there I go. Okay, so each time I start my game, um, my hero gets put in the middle here. We know that. And I get 10 zombies that just get put, uh, and you'll see they are facing random directions, okay? Some of them are up, some of them are down, some of them are left, some of them are right. Um, and that is, the, that is the switch statement that's doing that for us and the random number. And you can see it's placing the uh, random zombies in the world for me. Great. So we're doing fine here so far. Okay, so let's go back to the zombies. And now let's um, work on... Uh, let's say, let's say I, I'm gonna I'm gonna move them. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna come here into the zombies, and we are going to say um, private void uh, move zombie. Okay, so I've got this new method here called uh, move zombies. Okay, this will move 
and animate. We're going to put it all into one method. Um, if you, you could put it into two different ones if you want to, that's up to you. Um, you probably should have done that, but I'm just going to do it this way for now. So that'll um, move and animate the zombies. So let's work on. the animation first so we will we'll work on the the animation part first so let's say uh, counter uh, plus plus that there will just um, advance the tick counter for us uh, remember this is going to get called every time we're going to put this into the act method so every time the act method runs 60 times a second a tick counter will go up by one so what we're going to do is we're going to say right if the Tick counter. Remember, we don't want this to happen every frame, every, every tick, because it happens too fast then. Okay, we need to slow this down. We've done this before for the bullets uh, and the hero. Um, so we are going to do this here for the zombie baby. So if the tick counter is greater than or equal to uh, frame rate, okay, so we, we define that uh, further at, at further up. So if the tick counter is greater than frame rate, Uh, then we are uh, we've gone above the threshold so we we've got well we've gone above the frame rate and we can actually now move on so the first thing i want to do is i'm going to say uh, tick counter equals zero i'm just going to reset the tick counter okay that's the first thing i want to do okay then the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to increment the frame counter okay so that's just going to bump it's going to bump up Whatever frame, so if it's current, if the zombie baby is currently in frame three, that will move it up to frame four. Okay, so we're going to advance the frame counter. Now we need to check. Okay, remember we've only got eight frames uh, per zombie baby. So if the frame counter, I'm going to make sure that that does not go um, above seven. Okay, because it starts at zero. Okay, if the frame counter is more than seven, uh, then we want to reset it. Remember, I've done this in one line again. Okay, so the frame count is more than seven. I want to reset it back to zero. So now what I want to do is I want these zombie babies to change. Okay, I want them to change heading randomly. So they're, they're, they're going to be walking around the screen uh, trying to kill me, and but I want them to randomly change direction. So I'm going to uh, throw a random number. So I'm going to throw a random number here um, to look for a direction change. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, if greenfoot dot get random number. Okay, so I'm going to throw a random number, uh, and now I'm going to use this uh, change heading threshold. Okay, I defined this early on. It's a constant. Okay, and I'm going to say, um, is it equal to one? And you'll see, I'll just go back up top here a bit. Uh, there it is there, 20. Okay, so I'm when I throw this random uh, number, there's a one in 20 chance that it'll equal one. Okay, a one in 20 chance. So if I change that value, okay, up top here, if I edit that, the bigger I put there, the less the zombie babies will randomly change heading. Uh, the smaller number I put, the faster they will change heading. That's what it pretty much is saying. So we're going to say a direction equals greenfoot dot get random number four, and because I've I've. It's telling me that, yes, it wants me to change direction. And now I'm going to throw another random number to say, well, which, what must my new heading be? Okay, so I'm going to randomly change to a new direction if I randomly have to do it. Okay. And so for the, uh, the next piece here, I've actually got some code already written. Um, let me just go and grab that quickly just to save some typing. Okay, so once again, we are using this, the switch statement. 
Okay, and we're saying the same thing here because I've just I've just got a direction. Okay, so I'm either using a, a, the direction that I'm existing, I'm currently going in, or I threw another one here. Okay, so whatever the value of direction is, here is where I'm using the switch statement, um, and it will it will now take here for instance it's not going to be frame number zero it's going to be frame number frame counter so whatever frame counter is on it will move on to the next value okay and it will then also tell the baby okay it's going to pick the image okay it's going to pick the image and then it's also going to move the baby okay we're going to use the set location method to move the baby the zom baby in this direction so if it's if we are if we are going to the right, you can see that it's changing its x value by speed. Okay, so it's 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 moving to the right. Okay, here it'll be moving um, down. Okay, you can see it's changing the y value there. It's keeping x constant. So we're using set location to change the location of the baby. Great. Okay. Okay, so we have uh, we have now changed the direction of the baby, possibly randomly. Um, we have moved the baby. Now what we need to do is, and we have seen this before, uh, we need to teleport. So we want to teleport this baby. Once again, I've just written the code, so I'm just going to go and grab it here, just to save on some of the typing. Okay, so we've seen this teleportation code before. Um, <clears throat> you've seen it in having a ball, um, where we, if basically, if we if we get to the edge of the screen, we teleport across the screen. Okay, so what I'm, I, what I'm doing is I'm not I'm not going to go through it again. We've done it before. Just pause the video here if if you haven't seen it before, and just check on this. The fact that if we get to the left hand side of the screen, we jump to the right hand side of the screen. We kind of uh, teleport across. If we get to the right edge, we jump to the left. We at the top, we jump to the bottom. If we're at the bottom, we jump to the top. Okay, so that'll do the teleportation part of the code is right there. So now what we can do is we can go and take our um, our move zombie baby and we can go and put it into the uh, into the act method okay and we can compile that we get a clean compile and there are the zombie babies and if I run you can see now um, that, that they are the right the zombie babies are, are are randomly moving around the screen uh, they are animating and they are uh, teleporting across Okay, um, and I can also fire my bullets, but although I'm firing and not, nothing is happening. Okay, so we've got uh, what one piece of code left to do, and I, I told you earlier on that we'd come back to that piece of code, uh, and that is in the the actual bullet itself. Okay, so I just go back to the bullet here. At the bottom here, when we said uh, remove the bullet, okay. We said if the bullet is at the edge of the world, we must remove it. So there's another case. Okay, so I'm going to use an, an else if. Okay, so that we have we've got another case. So what happens if um, the bullet um, is touching? Okay, so if the bullet is touching. any zombie baby okay so if it touches anything in the zombie baby class okay and that is all zombie babies okay so if if the bullet remember I'm, I'm the bullet now i'm programming from the bullets perspective i'm in the bullets code so if i touch a zombie baby okay so i'm just gonna put uh, inside here i'm just gonna say um, bullet hits a zombie baby now this one here is Bullet gets to edge of screen. So here, if I've touched a zombie baby, what must we do? Well, now you're going to have to keep a careful eye on this one. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get, I need to be able to um, isolate which zombie baby I have hit. 
Okay, so I need to be able to get a handle on, uh, or I, get, I need to get a reference to the, the zombie baby that I've hit. Remember, there's 10 of them on the screen. I could have hit any one of them. Okay, so I need to know which one have I hit. So I'm declaring a new variable here, and it's of type zombaby. There it is, okay? So it's of type zombaby, and I'm just going to call it the dead one, okay? This is going to be, uh, think of it as being the name of the zombaby that I've hit, okay? So I'm going to say, um, now I'm going to use a, a method that we have not used before. So I'm going to say get one intersecting object. Okay, so I'm going to say get uh, one intersecting object. Okay, we used is touching here before, but there are other ways of checking for collision. Okay, so get one intersecting object that, and then I'm going to say, well, what class am I looking for? Well, I'm looking in the Zombaby class. Okay, so this will look in the Zombaby class and it'll, it'll give me one intersecting object that I am touching. Okay, so it's obviously the zombie that I've hit. But there is a problem. Okay, get one intersecting object returns an object of type actor. Okay, and that's not good enough for me because you can see I've declared my, my variable here as type zombie. So I have to cast. Okay, and if you have not done um, if you have not done casting before. Um, ask your teacher. They will. They will. Is zombie, uh, casting as a way that you can change the type of a variable. So I'm saying yes. I understand that get intersecting object returns an actor for me. Okay, but I want to change its type to zombie type. Okay, it must be this type, not actor type. It must be a zombie type. So I use casting so that the the the, the object that gets returned here is the same as the type of object I declared the dead one to be. Okay, so that might be a bit unusual. So just um, maybe pause the video, back it up a bit, and just go back over that again, um, and just go through that explanation again. Okay, so now I'm going to say um, get world. Okay, so I'm just going to throw up a world object, and now I'm going to say um, remove object. Okay, so I'm just going to use the remove object method. Um, of the world class. So I'm going to remove object. And which object do I want to move? Well, I want to take out the dead one. Okay, so because here I defined the object. So I found it here. I used get one intersecting object. I cast it to be a zombie. So the dead one is literally the name of the of the object of the zombie that I hit. And I want to remove it. So I um, remove the dead some baby. Okay, so I take out the dead some baby, and then obviously I also want to take out the. Um, I want to take out the bullet. Me, remember I am the bullet. So once I've ta once I've removed the zombie baby from the screen, I want to remove myself as well. The the the, the bullet that did the killing. Okay, remove the bullet that did the killing. So there I remove the dead zombie, and then here I remove the bullet that did the killing. Okay, so a little bit complicated in here. Well, not too complicated, just a little bit different to what you've seen before. Um, just make sure you go over that, understand it, uh, and you'll have no problems with it. So I'm going to compile that. Okay, I'm going to come back down here to my game. Okay, I'm going to run my game. Okay, and you'll see now when I shoot the zombie babies, they will now they will now disappear. Right. Okay, so that is where I'm going to leave this game. Okay, I'm not going to take it any further than this. What I'm hoping is that you, okay, you are going to do your own thing with this game. Okay, um, put a counter in. We've done counters before. You can just look back on some of our previous games, like Killer Crayfish, and you can see how to put a counter in. So you can say count your number of kills. Um, you can maybe randomly generate new zombie babies. 
um, you can maybe make them go faster. Uh, you, you can you can do something like when a zombie baby gets you, then you die, or maybe you lose some of your lives. I don't know. Um, remember, this is your game, so it's your rules. You set the rules. You're designing the game. Okay, so I'm hoping you enjoyed what we did here. I'm hoping you learned some new stuff, and I hope you take this platform that we've got here um, and make a fantastic uh, game for yourself. Thank you very much for following along. Um, please keep an eye on my channel for, for some new tutorials as they come up. Enjoy the rest of your day.